Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's good to um, be uh, together as we are worshiping the Lord in this new liturgical year. Uh, for those of you who are aware, this is the first Sunday of the year in the liturgical year. It is the first Sunday in Advent where we are uh, recalling and remembering um, how we are getting ready for Jesus is coming. For those of you who have uh, been with us uh, before, you know that uh, we are a Eucharistic community and we invite you uh, please to get your bread and your fruit of the vine uh, prepared so that during the worship service when we uh, commune together, uh, you will be able to participate. So um, right now we're going to begin with the uh, brief order for confession and forgiveness. And so we begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, let the church say amen. As we think about this uh, past week, perhaps there are some ways in which we know that we have offended God and that we have not served our neighbor well. And so this is an opportunity for us to confess those sins and desire to repent and to turn, around, turn from them and to follow Christ. So in this moment, I'm going to ask that you just simply think about this past week and those ways in which um, you have um, sinned against God and, and we will confess our sins together. And so let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please pray with me. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, let the church say amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This ends the reading. gospel for this uh, first Sunday in Advent is written in Mark chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. And Jesus said, But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, 
The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door, keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we don't know when you will come, whether you will come just simply for us or you will come at the end of time. Teach us, Lord, how to wait. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, according to many churches who read through spiritual time, as I said, uh, this is the beginning of a new year. So, Happy New Year. Uh, this year begins with the season of what is called Advent. And the word Advent comes from a Latin word, Adventus, which means coming. Now, what is Advent all about? I want to suggest this morning that Advent is about three things. Advent is about future. Advent is about history. And Advent is about present. That is, it is about liturgy. The Advent season is a time for us to spend times and moments looking into the future. On the one hand, we try to think biblically and spiritually into what it will mean in the future when Jesus comes again. For that is what we say in the creeds. We say that Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. Because Jesus told his disciples that one day he would return, not only as judge, but also to claim his church. And since that time, believers generally have not lost hope in his promise. Believers are looking into the future for Jesus' return. In fact, during the almost second century, there were some Christians who were beginning to lose hope in the possibility that Jesus would return. And the reason they were losing hope was because they were being persecuted and they were being killed. They were wondering how long these persecutions would last. So they began to lose hope. And you know, when you lose hope, you lose everything. If there is something, for instance, that is going on in your life right now, and you do not see the possibility of things working out or changing, you can lose hope. And that is the reason why some have committed suicide even, because in the moment before that act, they lost hope. You and I certainly have been through something else in this 2020. People have gotten what they call pandemic uh, fatigue. On this past Thanksgiving, there were so many who, in spite of the various warnings about gathering as families, still gathered in groups 
including various households. And that was because they were experiencing pandemic fatigue. But I believe that God still speaks to us in these moments. The writer Peter told his readers in 2 Peter chapter 8 and verse 8, he said, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So if there is a delay, why the delay? In other words, so if we find ourselves in a situation where we begin to wonder if God is ever going to move, we might ask ourselves, God's delay in coming, why is he doing that? And what we find is that sometimes the delay of God's move has to do with something else. It has to do with God's love and God's grace and God's plan for something else. First, it has to do with God giving the human race time, time to see clearly. Let's be honest with ourselves. In some ways, we don't want Jesus to return because we have gotten so caught up in this thing that we call reality. For the most part, we have bought into the promises that this world system has offered. And because of that, we hope that Jesus doesn't come back because we're so wrapped up in what we're doing today. But the fact is, is that Jesus will return one way or another. And as sure as you and I have come into this world, we definitely will leave it. And thus, Jesus will come again for us. And so that passage in 2 Peter is telling us that the reason why Jesus is delayed in coming back is to give people in, of this world a chance, a time, time to get it together, not to become perfect, but to develop the best relationship that we can with him. Therefore, this delay will give time for many to experience the good news of the gospel. For those who continue to avoid the, the love of God, time is given so that they may be given up to the power to turn, to turn around. For those who are in bondage, they are given the time to be released from their bondage. For those who have not yet experienced the liberating power of God, they have the time to experience God's desire for them and to be delivered and set free. For those who have not yet made themselves available to him, they have time to serve Christ. They have time to know that it is all about Christ living in them and serving through them. But Jesus' delay is also for us who say that we are Christians. This will give us time, as the saints used to say, to get our house in order. Giving us time to go deeper into who Jesus is for us and giving us the time to be used by God to love, to serve, and to witness for him. So Advent is about the future. It is about um, the fact that Jesus will come and we need to get ready for that coming. But Advent is also about history. You see, Jesus did come to the earth 2,000 years ago. He was born in Bethlehem in a manger. And as you know, a manger is a way to describe an animal feeding trough. That is where Jesus was placed after his birth, was in a feeding trough. Even though he came uh, from a working class family, Jesus was born of low estate. He was not born in comfortable surroundings. He was not born in rich accommodations. So Advent is also about history. But then Advent is about something else. It is about liturgy. It is about what we do today. It is about getting ready for something that will occur. Liturgically, it's about preparation. It is about looking inside and, and seeing in terms of our worship whether we really are ready for Jesus' coming. 
Advent is a time when we move not too quickly toward the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, not too quickly to Christmas. We are kept from immediately moving into the celebration of Christmas, but instead we learn to wait. It is why in many of our churches we, we don't yet sing Christmas carols or, or put up the Christmas tree. We learn not to have instant gratification or the instant singing of Christmas carols, but we wait with patience. And while we wait, we permit the Spirit of God to do his work in our lives. We permit him to transform us from the inside out. We permit the Spirit to move us deeper and deeper into God's grace and God's power. I don't know if you remember um, a tragic, tragic event that took place some years ago in what was called Black Friday. That's when all of these companies, instead of being in the red, they go and they get in the back black because they have sold so many things. For those who may not understand, when retailers, sellers have not sold many goods during the year when they get to that point after Thanksgiving, they might have red ink on the ledger sheets. What that means is if they don't sell many of their goods, they will owe somebody. Well, some years ago, on a Black Friday, at a Walmart store in New York City, there were people who were so interested in being able to purchase goods at a lower price that they stood on line outside the store for hours. And when the doors were open to this Walmart in New York, the people were in such a hurry to get inside and somebody was trampled on underfoot. Think about it. Someone was being stomped on because the crowd was impatient about buying things. Advent, my friends, is a good thing for us in the 21st century. It will teach us to wait. Perhaps with this pandemic, something like that may not have happened because we must stand in line and we must uh, be six feet apart. But the gospel text in Mark does teach us how to wait. In Mark 13, Jesus is telling his followers about last things. He tells them something about the stresses and the distresses that they will go through. In last things language, he talks about things happening in the atmosphere. The sun is darkened. The moon won't give its light. Light. The stars will fall from the sky. In other words, the creation is out of whack. And it is in a time like that that the Son of Man, in other words, the Messiah, will return. He will send his angels and gather his people from all over the earth. And then he tells a parable about figs. The basic point is that he's encouraged them to read the times. I remember as a child when the weather would begin to change, my mother would tell me that I needed to put on different kinds of clothes. She would tell me, don't go outside with your coat open. I couldn't go out with my hat or, or, or on my head. I had to be prepared. Because if not prepared, you can catch a cold. Jesus was telling the disciples to be prepared. He wanted them to read the times and see what was going on and get ready for what was going to take place. They were going to be challenged by their future. And there were two things that he basically told them to do. Two things I believe that God wants to leave us today. First of all, be ready. In simple terms, it means Put yourself in a frame of mind of readiness. One of the images of scripture in the book of Ephesians is the concept of spiritual warfare. And according to the writer of Ephesians, the devil, the enemy of our lives, is intent on lodging a frontal attack against the people of God. Through what we read, what we look at through our emotions, through addictions, through how we spend our time, through our circumstances. There is a spiritual warfare that's going on. 
And so the Apostle Paul is basically telling us, well, you're going to get ready. And the way to get ready is to put on the whole armor of God. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the belt of truth. The feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The shield of faith, which uh, will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil, evil one. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's how you get ready. And so, if we are going to be looking out, we must prepare ourselves with the right kind of armor, the right kind of, of protection, to arm ourselves with truth and not lying and giving falsehood. Arm ourselves with right living arm ourselves with peace that passes all human understanding, with faith to believe the impossible. That's how we get ready. Protect yourselves with the covering of salvation where God has saved you, is saving you, and will save you for Jesus' sake. And arm yourselves with the written word of God. Memorize it, eat it, drink it, study it, Make it your very best companion. The right kind of clothing so that when the enemy comes against us, we can be prepared to meet him. So first of all, Jesus says, get ready. But the other thing that he says is, stay awake. We must confess this, that sometimes we go to sleep. I remember calling a friend of mine. It was a sister in Christ. It was about 7 p.m. in the evening. I wanted to get uh, some words to a song from her. And her mother uh, answered the phone, and her mother said that she was sleeping. Her mother left the phone and got her up, and, and my friend came to the phone, and she said that she was watching TV, and then the TV was watching her. She went to sleep. Sometimes we go to sleep and the word is simply watching us. We're not moving forward. We're staying stagnant and still in our lives. We're, we're making no progress. We are moving ahead. We're not moving ahead in the vocation God has led us to. We're living the same kinds of lives that we've lived for the last 10 years. There comes a point when we need to call an end to that stagnation, and we need to say no more. There is a famous uh, movie director and screenwriter by the name of Spike Lee, and I noticed that in many of Spike Lee's early films, somewhere in the film, one of the characters always says, wake up! Sometimes, my friends, we are asleep on the job, and nothing is getting done. We are asleep in our society. We are letting things happen without our standing for good. By the power of God, we need to step out of that rut that we have gotten ourselves into. We need to wake up. During this season of Advent, let's wait. And while we are waiting, let's get ready. Get ready by getting ready and making sure that we are keeping awake. Amen. And so now we're going to pray together. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, throwing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
We pray for people who are in crisis as a result of this pandemic, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, and for those who need to receive relief from our government, relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you came into the parking lot, you have been given an opportunity to give an offering to the Lord through the church. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. And now at this time, we're going to prepare for our communion. So if you would please uh, take your elements, um, your bread and your uh, fruit of the vine of choice, and let us prepare to receive com communion. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way also, he took the cup. When he had given thanks and when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please repeat after me. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Please take your bread. And let us eat together. Now let us take the cup and let us drink together. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and your mercy strengthening us through this gift, and faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, you know that we are continuing to have uh, this worship experience on Sundays at 1030. And so we do invite you, uh, please, to um, uh, join with us as we worship our God. But also, um, this on Saturdays at 10 a.m., we have a Zoom Bible study. We are studying the book of Romans. And all you would need to do is just simply um, send us a note and give us your email address, and then we will send that to you. There is also a way that you can participate in this Bible study by um, calling in a telephone number. And so we can give you that telephone number so that you call in and be a part of that Bible study. We had a great time uh, this past uh, Saturday. And so we want to invite all of you uh, who would like to be a part of this ministry to join with us in the study of the Word of God. Uh, for those who are part of this fellowship, you know that on this, this is a fifth Sunday, and generally we have a, what we call a Good Samaritan Fund. And so we'd ask to make sure that you would give a gift uh, for special needs that, that do come up. Well, let us uh, receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, said the Lord, and honk your horns.